It happened. The unthinkable. The shift that showed our frailty. Nonetheless, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. We are separated. We are isolated. And in this world, we have trouble. Nonetheless, we take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. We are conflicted and frustrated, weary too. But nonetheless, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. We are down but not out, sidelined but still in the game. We fight for our families, we hold on to love, we strive for kindness, but the hard times get harder. Nonetheless, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. We walk through adversity. We are sons and daughters of the Most High. We know to whom we belong and we know where our hope lies. For he is the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega, the one who is and the one who is to come. It looks bleak, they say it's grim, there's a lot to fear, but nonetheless, we are strong. We are courageous. We are the church. Good morning. It is Sunday, February the 5th. It is our annual general meeting. Why do we do it on a Sunday? Um, it would seem that, you know, conducting business on a Sunday at church goes counter to holding a service. And I'm going to argue that it doesn't. The reality is this. Throughout the New Testament, uh, Paul, Peter, John, any of the ones who wrote letters to the New Testament churches would check in with them and give them feedback on what they were seeing. And effectively, that's what our annual general meeting is all about. We're wanting to give uh, the members of our congregation feedback on how the congregation is doing and to talk about some of the directional things that we believe we need to move into in this year of 2023. Why do we need to give feedback to people who attend the church? Well, the reality is we attend, uh, in any one of our lives, we attend part of the church, but probably not all of it. What do I mean by that? I have not helped out in the nursery in ever. Don't know that I've ever participated in the nursery ministry. I like to keep tabs on it. I like to hear what's going on and how the babies are being taken care of. Like, seriously, I do. And this gives an opportunity for the nursery ministry, the kids' ministry, the youth ministry, the ladies' ministry, all of these various different ministries to collectively report to the entire congregation and talk about how they see things going. Um, We give a financial update. We don't have a church bulletin on a Sunday morning. And one of the things we've very deliberately done is not talk about those ongoing um, financial needs on a weekly basis. We really felt that it was a matter of trust and really that it's a matter of people being aware and tuning in when the opportunity for financial updates is given. This is one of those opportunities. So there's going to be that going on. The other thing that's going to take place is our name change. We've been talking about this for some time now, and we're going to bring it to a vote this Sunday. It's important. So Why on a Sunday are we bringing all of these things together? Because, well, in a number of ways, it's important for us as a congregation to make these decisions together, to learn about them together so that we can ask questions together. Um, One of the things that we want to uh, obviously do in addition to giving ministry updates is to evaluate our progress thus far in the year on our budget. Um, When it comes to finances, like I said earlier, we want to keep people abreast on what's going on and how we're doing. Um, One of the things that we also need to, uh, to take a look at is how we have been approaching giving 
in a COVID and post-COVID reality. Just before we moved into the COVID season, we had started to adopt a whole series of ways to give to the church outside of being at the Sunday morning service. We had years earlier um, opened the door to giving through PayPal. And then we had pre-authorized giving where people could set uh, the amount that they wanted to give on the 1st and 15th of the month. Then we went with e-transfers. More recently, we've been doing uh, TAP, where we have a uh, square terminal, and people can give on a Sunday morning that way. And certainly, you can still give uh, through our donation box and put your donation in that at a Sunday morning service. Now, one of the things that we realized, especially with our pre-authorized giving, is that it took an aspect of giving out that people had been concerned about for years, and that was remembering. We're all busy these days, and admittedly, people were saying, you know, remembering to bring uh, my checkbook or to get cash on a Sunday morning was a bit of a challenge. By having pre-authorized giving, we eliminated that challenge. But with every solution, and, and this goes for life in general, every time you put a solution in place, you need to monitor it to see that it's having the effect you want, but that also it's not introducing something new by way of a problem. One of the things that we have found is that when you introduce pre-authorized giving, it takes the... Um, onus off the person to have to remember every single Sunday, you know, to give. But it also encourages a set it and forget it approach to tithing, which frankly isn't healthy. If we're not regularly on top of what we're giving to the church and reviewing that, then we can often find that we have let it sit that way for potentially years without revising our gifts or considering if the Lord might ask us to give more. This is something that we want to encourage people in, and that is something that we're going to be talking about at our in-person general meeting. Let's talk about the big thing that is going to uh, be visited, and that is the name change. It's probably the biggest item on our agenda, and why are we proposing that this be done? Um, can I suggest a number of factors? First off, a name is not a static thing. And you may be thinking, well, Gary, I disagree. You know, I've been called Susan all of my life, you know, from when I was a little kid right through, and now I'm an adult. But have you? Um, I'm not wanting to be contentious, but what I would say is this. You know, maybe when Susan was a little kid, she was called Little Susie, uh, you know, and then later she was like, no, I'm not a little kid now. Call me Sue or Susan. Um, that's how it happens, right? As we age and mature, um, the way people refer to us, you know, when uh, I was a little kid, sometimes in formal settings, not entirely sure what those were all about, but they would refer to me as Master Gary. Master, really? Um, yeah, it was a younger form of Mr. Um, and then as I aged, I found that people would refer to me as Mr. Gary or, you know, Pastor Gary or whatever. Lately, I've had people calling me Sir. I think that has something to do with the gray hair. Um, it's a little disconcerting. Um, at any rate, the point I think you can see, names are not a static thing. And that has to be also true for the church. Are we adequately represented by the name Port Elgin Missionary Church? Years ago, Port Elgin and Southampton and the Saugeen Township merged to be the municipality of Saugeen Shores. And to be fair, we have people who attend our congregation from each one of, and in addition to those, other municipalities and regions. So the name Port Elgin really doesn't reflect an accurate picture, 
picture of who we are. Another thing that is true is this. When the name missionary was adopted, and by our denomination it was adopted back in the 40s, it was done so out of a a reflection, uh, a desire to identify that missions was a big, important part of who we were. That is still true. However, what we've come to realize is that in our society, the term missionary often carries with it now um, nuances of colonialism, and that's unfortunate. Again, did it represent um, what I was familiar with as missions growing up? No. Um, Certainly there was an effort to um, preach the gospel and to talk about Jesus Christ, but in my experience, a lot of our missionaries were doctors and nurses. They were very much interested in the whole person. And so, again, for me, the name missionary didn't carry a negative connotation. But not everybody has my experience. And we're recognizing that it's time to adjust that and to have a name that reflects who we want to be. So who do we want to be? It is very accurate to say that we want to be known as a community of individuals who follow Jesus Christ, for whom Christ is our Lord and Savior. So the idea of being a community together is a very strong identity for us. The other piece of that is this. We not only want to be a community together of Christ followers, we want to be seen as being there for our community the community of Sogging Shores. I really believe that to gain traction in our community for the message of Christ, we need to, we need to be very intentional in saying that we are there for our community as a church. So when you put it all together, Sogging Shores Community Church is the name we're proposing and the members are going to be voting on that. I feel it's an accurate reflection of who we want to be as a church. You know, the reality is this. Our society has had a lot going on. We've had COVID the last number of years. For almost a year now, the war in Ukraine has been raging. We're fighting inflation. There's all kinds of challenges. In Sogging Shores, we see the challenge of homelessness, We see the challenge of people who, while they may have an adequate income, um, the challenges of life are multiple. And so in the midst of that then, people can begin to despair. You know, we see a mental health crisis that is very much unfolding in our society. And people are turning to all kinds of things for answers. Um, You know, we see uh, a strong uptick in drug usage, um, alcohol abuse, all of those kinds of things. So in the midst of a lot of things not being ideal in our society, you know, the question begins to ask, you know, where is there some good news? Where is there something to be hopeful about? And, you know, it reminds me of, one of my favorite verses in Scripture. I absolutely love it because it represents um, the hopelessness that is found in everyday life outside of a vital relationship with God. And the author of Psalm 4 was David. In David's day, there were lots of challenges. I mean, let's face it, uh, giants, good night. You know, at least in all of the things, and you know, some of you are saying, don't say it, Gary. I mean, we don't have giants out there roaming around, but we do have giant problems. But in the midst of all of the uh, things that David was encountering before he was king and after he was king, you know, he was seeing all kinds of things in the world that, that were obvious situations of need. And I love how he ties that all together in Psalm 4 and verse 6. He says, Many are asking, who can show us any good? 
You know, could somebody please give us something to be hopeful in? I love how he says it. He says, Lord, let the light of your face, O Lord, shine on us. Wow. That's pretty bold. You know, many are saying, it's a mess out there. Who can show us anything good? And David says, put the spotlight on us, Lord. If they're looking for something good, let the light of your face shine on us. And let us represent your goodness in our world. That's bold. But it's also something to say, wow. You know, the church, when it really is the bride of Christ, when it really is the representation of what Christ wants it to be, it is the answer for our world. There's no question. So there it is. Do we change our name? I'm trusting that we will. I believe it's the right step to take. And uh, this coming Sunday, we're going to address that head on. We want to gain traction in our community. We want to have the Lord shine his spotlight on us and say, there's some good. That's something to live up to. And that's the challenge we have to embrace. The fact is, whether we deal with it in as stark a term as that, you know, this idea of, Lord, put your spotlight on us. We want to be those. Whether we come right out and say that or not, the reality is the spotlight should be on us. We are claiming to worship the Lord, our Savior, Jesus. We believe that he is the answer for the world. So, you know, like the old chorus in Sunday school, uh, you know, that we sang, uh, it needs to be our heart message again, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. We have to. Our world needs it. We're going to talk about some other things as well. You know, uh, our building is starting to show that the renovation that was completed in 2006, um, some of those elements are showing some wear and tear, uh, not the least of which is our carpet. Uh, We have had thousands and thousands of people through our doors since 2006. The carpet is showing its age. We have light fixtures that need to be switched over to more energy-efficient LEDs. These are all of the the things that we're going to be talking about. We want to be a congregation that makes a difference in our world on every front. And as the Lord helps us, as he shines his light on us, we will endeavor to do that. That's what we're going to be talking about at our annual general meeting on Sunday, February the 5th. If you're listening to this, it's going to be what's taking place. Or if it's after the fact, uh, this will be what we talked about. And as we move into this future, our prayer as always is that, you know, the Lord goes with us. Let's pray for that right now. Father, we do ask, watch over us. Lord, it is a bold statement to say, Lord, let your light shine upon us. If people are asking um, where the good can be seen, for us to say, you know what, put the spotlight here. Wow, that's bold. Father, I pray that we would have grace and humility when we're not perfect. Father, we are not perfect people. But Lord, we want to be, uh, with you being our helper, we want to be who you've meant for us to be. So, Lord, we want to step into that bold uh, reality that you call us to. Father, be with each of us. Lord, even for, uh, especially for those who maybe aren't going to be able to be at the meeting, I pray that this representation would capture the heart of what is going to take place there and indeed what you want to see. Lord, Lord, watch over us. These are days that... um, that many are finding challenging. And Lord, I pray that with your strength, 
we would be your answer to these folks and to many more. Lord, be with us as we move further and further into this new year. And Lord, guide us, provide for us, watch over us, I pray. In Christ's name, amen. Youth is uh, on tonight, uh, Sunday, February the 5th. We are going to be having youth uh, as regularly scheduled. For uh, parents of young people, just a reminder that on Sunday, February the 12th, we are going to be having our Super Bowl party. And because, well, it is at our Gustavus facility, um, the format for the evening is going to be a little bit different because the game is obviously going to go longer than our usual ending time of 8 o'clock. So we have some forms that you uh, need to fill out if you want your team to participate in this. There's lots of stuff going on. I'd encourage you, check out our website. For the time being, at least, it is uh, themissionarychurch.com, and you can see what's going on there. Click on our event page. If you are interested in giving to the church, there are uh, links that you can click on that will provide information as to how you can do that. We want to thank everyone who participates in the life of our congregation. Uh, We're excited about where God is taking us, and we're glad to have people who partner with us to see us get there. God bless.